Chapter 1. The First Impression John had always been a modest man, though behind his simple appearance lay an impressive story of success. He never sought to flaunt his wealth and believed that true relationships were built on something deeper than money. His friends knew about his achievements in business, but John avoided conversations about his finances and considered that his accomplishments shouldn't define him as a person. One day, his friends invited him to a small gathering at a cozy apartment where their group often met. John wasn't expecting anything special, just another evening with familiar faces. But everything changed when he saw her Emma. She was charming and a bit mysterious, laughing occasionally and chatting with friends, her gaze radiating warmth. John instantly felt that there could be something special between them. At first, Emma didn't even notice him. She was immersed in conversations with others, while John stood aside, hesitant to approach. They exchanged a few brief glances, but that was it. John didn't rush, he decided to wait a little. As the evening drew to a close, one of his friends, Ted, finally introduced them. Emma, this is John, a good friend of mine. He works in finance, very smart guy, Ted said with a light joke. Emma politely smiled and greeted John but didn't seem particularly interested. John, on the other hand, was captivated by her beauty and grace. They chatted for a few minutes about general topics, the weather, books, music. The conversation didn't go beyond polite small talk. John noticed that she wasn't paying him much attention, and although it unsettled him a bit, he decided not to rush things. The next day, John couldn't stop thinking about Emma. He began looking for opportunities to see her again. Mutual friends helped, and they bumped into each other at cafes or during group walks, but Emma kept her distance. She seemed more interested in lively, charismatic people, while John was quiet and unassuming. Everything changed one evening when Emma accidentally found out who John really was. One of his friends mentioned in conversation a major project John was working on, casually dropping figures that Emma could only dream of. Her eyes suddenly lit up, and John noticed the change. The next time they met, things were completely different. Emma became much friendlier, even interested in him. She laughed at his jokes, asked questions about his life, and listened attentively to stories of his travels and achievements. John, sensing the change, was pleasantly surprised. It was exactly what he had hoped for. Emma seemed genuine, close, real. Yet, deep down, small doubts gnawed at him. They started spending more time together. Emma now showed great enthusiasm for every detail of his life. But sometimes John felt that things were moving too fast, too suddenly. Her newfound attention, which was absent before, now became almost overwhelming. John couldn't figure out if it was true affection or just a mask Emma was hiding behind. Then came the moment when John decided to invite her to dinner at one of the city's most expensive restaurants. Emma eagerly agreed. At dinner, she looked stunning and was more playful than usual. She marveled at the exquisite dishes, subtly hinting that she could get used to such a lifestyle. John watched her and couldn't shake the feeling that it was all too artificial, not the way he had envisioned. However, at that moment, it seemed his dream was coming true. Emma, the girl who once ignored him, was now by his side, seemingly sharing Chapter moments two, of happiness The Hidden him. Secret For John, it felt like a miracle. He believed he had found the woman he had been searching for his entire life. His feelings for Emma grew stronger, and he was convinced that she reciprocated. Her warm smile, sincere conversations, and constant support enchanted him. It seemed as though they were made for each other. He didn't notice how her behavior changed after she discovered his wealth. For John, it didn't matter. He was head over heels in love. A few weeks after their relationship became more serious, John felt it was time to share his deepest secret with Emma. They were sitting on the terrace of his house, which offered a stunning view of the city. John carefully began to tell her about his daughter, Sarah. It turned out that John was a widower, and after his wife passed away a few years ago, he had been raising his daughter alone. As he started talking about it, Emma grew silent. She listened intently, but her smile slowly faded. In her eyes, 
There was a hint of dissatisfaction, but John, absorbed in his own thoughts, didn't pay much attention to it. Sarah is my greatest joy and responsibility, he admitted. She's still young, but very smart and sensitive. I'm sure you two will get along. Emma forced a smile, though inside, she felt irritation rising. She never imagined herself living with children, and she definitely didn't want to share John's attention with anyone, even if it was his daughter. But most of all, she was annoyed that this fact complicated her plan to live a life of luxury with John. However, she quickly composed herself and decided not to show her true feelings. Oh, I didn't know you had a daughter, Emma said, trying to keep a polite tone. That's certainly a surprise, but I'm sure we'll find common ground. John sighed with relief. He had feared that this news might change their relationship, but Emma seemed ready to accept his life with all its aspects. He was grateful to her for that and became even more convinced that he had made the right choice. A few days later, John invited Emma to move in with him. She agreed without hesitation. Living in a luxurious mansion with every possible comfort only strengthened her confidence that she had chosen the right path. However, her thoughts about Sarah remained unchanged. The girl stood in the way of her perfect plan, and each day, Emma felt more and more that something had to be done about it. When they began living together, Emma tried to be kind to the child. She smiled and said nice things, but inside, she harbored resentment. Sarah, in turn, sensed something unnatural in Emma's behavior. Despite her outward friendliness, the girl felt a certain coldness and even danger. She avoided the new friend of her father, and their conversations were short and tense. Emma started thinking of different ways to get rid of Sarah. She believed that once the girl was out of the picture, she could finally enjoy her ideal life with John. Her main goal now was to find a way to do this without John suspecting anything. Meanwhile, John was absorbed in taking care of Emma. He thought everything was going great and was happy that the two most important people in his life were now under one roof. But deep down, a small doubt remained. Why was Sarah always so distant around Emma? At the same time, Emma began to implement her plan, slowly and carefully. What exactly she had in mind remained a mystery, but she already knew how to start acting to get rid of Sarah. Chapter 3. Good. The Unveiling when John received an offer to go on a major business project for three months, he hesitated. On the one hand, it was a great opportunity to advance his career and secure his financial position. On the other, he didn't want to leave Sarah for such a long time. But Emma convinced him that everything would be fine, that she would take care of Sarah and make sure she felt comfortable. John, having no reason to doubt the woman he loved, agreed. Before leaving, he bought Sarah a gift a beautiful doll with big blue eyes that she had wanted for a long time. The doll was special. Hidden in its eyes was a video camera, known only to John and Sarah. It was his safeguard in case something went wrong. As soon as John left, Emma began to execute her cruel plan. She met with one of her acquaintances, a doctor with a dubious reputation who was always willing to do things for money that others found unacceptable. They quickly came to an agreement and the doctor helped Emma create a fake medical record for Sarah, stating that the girl was suffering from a rare and incurable disease. According to the documents, she had only one month to live. Emma began acting cautiously, playing her part as the concerned guardian. She constantly told Sarah about her illness, making the girl believe she was truly sick. Sarah felt that something was wrong, but she was too scared to tell anyone. She felt isolated especially without her father around. A few weeks after John left, Emma decided to move to the next phase of her plan. She called John, her voice trembling with tears, and told him the terrible news. Sarah was terminally ill, and she had only a few weeks left to live. She explained the diagnosis and how difficult it was for her to accept. Her voice was filled with fake worry and concern. But John... Knowing Emma as a loving and devoted woman couldn't immediately believe that it was a lie. This is impossible, John said quietly into the phone. Sarah was perfectly healthy when I left. What happened? Emma cried, 
convincing him that this was an inevitable diagnosis. She also suggested that he shouldn't return home, as it would only make things worse. In her opinion, his presence would only traumatize Sarah more. But deep down, John felt something was off. He couldn't believe that his daughter had fallen so ill so suddenly, especially with a fatal disease. Then he remembered the doll. His gift might be the only hope to understand what was really happening at home. A few days later, when Emma was unaware, John accessed the video recording stored in the cloud. He carefully watched several days of Sarah's life. What he saw shocked him. The video showed Emma manipulating the girl, telling her about the disease that didn't exist, making her believe in an impending death. John also saw her meeting with the doctor and the forged documents they prepared together. It was all a carefully crafted scheme meant to eliminate Sarah so Emma could control his life and wealth without any obstacles. John couldn't believe that the woman he loved was capable of such cruelty. His heart ached with betrayal and pain, but now he knew the truth. Immediately after, he called his lawyer and headed back home, without warning Emma of his arrival. When John appeared at the doorstep, Emma was surprised but tried to remain calm. However, her expression changed when John presented her with the evidence, the video from the doll. She couldn't deny what had happened and realized her plan had failed. John called the police, and the doctor who had helped Emma was also exposed. Her plan to get rid of Sarah and seize John's wealth had collapsed. John realized that he had trusted the wrong person and that his true love was for his daughter. He would never again allow anyone to threaten their peaceful life. Emma was arrested for fraud and conspiracy, and John vowed to be even more protective of those he loved from such dangers in the future. We met too late or vice versa. Chapter 1. The First Encounter. The leaves had begun to change colors, transitioning into a canvas of gold, crimson, and amber. In the small, picturesque town of Maplewood, the crisp autumn air carried a sense of nostalgia, as if the season itself whispered stories of the past. Clara was a freelance photographer who came to Maplewood for a much-needed escape. Her life in the city had become too chaotic, too noisy. Clara always found peace in the quiet rustle of falling leaves, the smell of wood burning in chimneys, and the promise of an escape from her fast-paced life. She rented a cozy cabin near the town's edge, hoping to spend a few weeks capturing the beauty of autumn with her camera. She wasn't expecting anything more than peaceful solitude. That was until she met Leo. Leo had lived in Maplewood his entire life. A craftsman by trade, he worked in a wood shop that had been in his family for generations. He found comfort in the steady rhythm of his work, creating furniture and art from the very trees that surrounded the town. Maplewood was his home, and he never intended to leave. One day, while Clara was photographing the vibrant autumn foliage near a local forest, she found herself lost. Not in a typical, panicked way, more like lost in the magic of a season, as though the beauty of the place had captured her soul. She wandered deeper into the woods until she stumbled upon an old wooden cabin, its windows aglow with soft light. This was Leo's workshop. Their first meeting was simple. Clara knocked on the door to ask for directions, and Leo, though taken by surprise, was intrigued by her presence. They exchanged polite greetings, and Clara couldn't help but notice the warmth in his eyes the kind that spoke of long autumn nights spent beside the fire. Chapter 2. Sparks Amid the Falling Leaves Clara found herself returning to Leo's workshop more often than she had expected. What started as polite visits became long conversations. Leo showed her how he crafted his wooden masterpieces and Clara, in turn, shared her love for photography. They were two artists in different fields, both captivated by the beauty of nature. The weeks passed, and with each visit, their bond grew stronger. Leo's quiet nature complemented Clara's spirited curiosity. He enjoyed her stories of city life, and she admired his connection to the simple, grounding life in Maplewood. One crisp afternoon, Leo invited Clara to join him for a walk through the woods, where he showed her a hidden clearing, a place that only a few locals knew about. It was there, beneath a canopy of golden leaves, that they shared their first kiss. It was soft, 
tentative and unexpected, but the spark between them was undeniable. It felt like the season itself was bringing them together, wrapping them in the warmth of Autumn's embrace. Chapter 3 A Storm in Paradise As Autumn deepened, so did their relationship. But with the beauty of the season came the first challenge. Clara's time in Maplewood was coming to an end, and the reality of her city life began to creep back in. She had projects to complete, clients waiting, and a life she couldn't simply leave behind. Leo, on the other hand, had never imagined leaving Maplewood. His life, his family, his roots were here. Tension began to grow between them. Clara loved Leo, but she couldn't see a future for herself in a small town, no matter how peaceful it was. Leo, too, struggled. For the first time, he questioned his decision to stay in Maplewood for the rest of his life. Could he leave it all behind for Clara? The couple faced their first major argument on the night of the Harvest Festival, an annual celebration that the entire town looked forward to. The festival was filled with laughter, music, and dancing, but Leo and Clara found themselves in a corner, voices raised in frustration. Clara insisted that her career was important, and Leo, hurt and confused, couldn't understand why she couldn't stay. They parted ways that night, unsure of what their future held. Chapter 4 The Distance Grows The following week was filled with silence. Clara threw herself into her photography, hoping to distract herself from the pain of their argument. She captured the vibrant colors of the season, the fleeting beauty of autumn, but her heart wasn't in it. Every time she pressed the shutter, she thought of Leo. Leo, too, found it hard to focus on his work. The woodshop, once his sanctuary, now felt hollow without Clara's laughter and presence. He missed her, but his pride kept him from reaching out. Days turned into weeks, and the first signs of winter began to appear. The once vibrant leaves fell to the ground, and the chill in the air mirrored the growing distance between them. Chapter 5 A Crossroads just when it seemed like the season of their love had come to an end, fate intervened. Clara's final photography assignment was to capture the first snowfall in Maplewood. As she wandered the streets with her camera, she found herself drawn back to the clearing where she and Leo had shared their first kiss. It was now covered in a blanket of white, the trees bare, but the memory of their time together was still vivid in her mind. Leo, too, had been thinking about Clara— he realized that while Maplewood would always be his home, Clara had become his heart. He couldn't let her go without trying one last time. They met in the clearing, both surprised to see the other. The tension that had built between them melted away in the face of their shared longing. Clara admitted that she was scared. Scared of giving up her life for love, scared of what the future might hold. Leo, in turn, admitted that he had been selfish. He didn't want to hold her back from her dreams, but he also couldn't imagine a life without her. Chapter 6 Compromise in the Winter Wind In that moment, they realized that love wasn't about choosing between two lives. It was about building a new one together. Clara didn't have to give up her career, and Leo didn't have to leave Maplewood. They could find a balance, a compromise. Clara decided to take on fewer assignments, splitting her time between the city and Maplewood. She found that the peace of the small town inspired her photography in ways she hadn't imagined, and Leo began expanding his woodshop, selling his handcrafted pieces to clients in the city through Clara's connections. It was a partnership that grew from love, trust, and understanding. As winter settled in and the first snowflakes began to fall, Clara and Leo stood hand in hand in the clearing, knowing that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Their love, like the changing seasons, had grown and evolved, but it had only become stronger. Epilogue Eternal Autumn Years later, Clara and Leo still returned to that clearing every autumn, watching the leaves turn and fall, grateful for the season that had brought them together. Their love story was one of patience, compromise, and growth, a love that had withstood the storms of doubt and fear, just like the trees that surrounded them.